Okay, I uh, did a bit of a change over there, so if you need pause. Um, thanks very much, Mark. Uh, our next speaker is Yang Gotchen, a PhD student here in the Department of Building and Civil Engineering. He's an ex uh, construction management graduate and a graduate also of MSc in Environmental Systems. He's going to talk today about looking at resource efficiency during construction programs. Hello everybody. As Mark said, my name is Jan Gutsche. Um, I'm an assistant lecturer and PhD candidate here in GMIT. And today I'm just going to talk you through some lessons learned um, from the implementation of a number of resource efficiency strategies on some small and large scale construction projects here in the west of Ireland. So what is resource efficiency? Resource efficiency in its most basic form means doing more with less. And I'm covering the area of energy reduction, waste management, water management, and also carbon emissions reduction. And the EU states that resource efficiency can increase economic, economic opportunities, lower construction costs, improve productivity, boost competitiveness, and support a low carbon economy. So the current study has been carried out with two uh, case study contractors here in the west of Ireland. One is BAM Building, it's a large multinational company. And the second is Kerry Developments, which will be an SME company. So it's good to have the range of both um, size uh, building contractors. So the study has been funded by the EPA through the Cleaner Greener Production Program. So to put the energy part of resource efficiency into context, so why do we want to reduce our energy? Ireland is currently aiming to meet targets set by the EU of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2020. 89% of our energy is currently imported, with 60% of our primary energy supply being made up of oil. And what I'm trying to show is that maximizing energy efficiency can help, it can help us reduce our reliance on imported energy, as well as helping us to meet that 2020 target. The context in relation to waste, uh, volumes have fluctuated due to the economic downturn from a high of 17.8 million tonnes in 2007 to the most recent estimate of just 3 million tonnes in 2011. So this reflects unsustainable economic growth and decline and has highlighted the, the direct correlation between construction output and increased environmental impacts. And despite this lower recent estimate of just 3 million tonnes, uh, construction waste is still one of the largest waste streams in Ireland. So just to show you the case studies that we've been working on over the last um, 19 months. So the first case study was uh, the Zugishka Public-Private Partnership Scheme. It was one of the schools put in three buildings. So it was the construction of a primary and a secondary school on the Greenfield site here in Galway. It was 8,200 metres squared, a value of around 10.8 million and 16 months uh, construction period. Then once those two buildings had been completed, there was two add-on buildings built on of a similar spec and design and there were two special needs units, one for the primary school and one for the secondary school. They had a combined uh, floor area of 547 meters squared, a value of 820,000, and a construction period of just four months. The third case study was a cancer research facility in UCHD, which was just recently completed uh, by BAM Building, and again, 5,125 meters squared, a value of around 20 million, and another 16 months of construction time. A newly started uh, case study is an NUIG, it's a human biology building. It's just recently started in January by Van Building. And again, 8,200 meters squared, value of around 30 million and 19 months construct construction period. So the SME also had a number of case studies which were a lot smaller. Um, the first one was the cystic fibrosis unit, again in UCHG, 223 meters squared, 590,000 construction value and a construction period of just 31 weeks. Second case study with uh, Kerry Developments was a podiatry unit. It was an extension to an existing unit, a new operating theatre. It was 401 metres squared, value of 1.4 million and 32 weeks construction period. And then just three more smaller case studies. Uh, the first one here is a high dependency unit in box cores. Second one was the construction of a switch room in UCHG. And the third one was demolition of Block M in NUIG and the area was free landscaped and also some car parking was put in place. So just to summarize the case studies, they've ranged in value from just 150,000 to 30 million, so a good scope of um, size projects, from 66 meters squared to 8,300 meters squared. In total, we've done 312 site visits, which in, 
uh, a site audit was carried out during each visit, so there's a 312 resource efficiency audit carried out, so that's where the data has come from for this presentation. Uh, nine sites to date, with two more sites in the pipeline. One is a multi-story car park in UCHG, and the second is a mental health unit also in UCHG. So 19 months completed so far, and another six to eight months um, ahead of us for the case to be part of the research. So today I'm going to be mainly focusing on the Dugishka PPP project. Um, so obviously there's a huge cost to a contractor for both energy and waste on site. So just to remind you, it was a 16 month project of 8,200 meters squared. And the total energy and waste cost for that project were over 150,000 euros. So nearly 10,000 euros a month or two grand a week. Uh, the total CO2 emissions were almost 500 tons. So it's clear from that slide that there's a huge environmental cost and a huge monetary cost uh, for the main contractor on site. So just to put those CO2 emissions into perspective for that project, 500 tons is equivalent to 105 passenger vehicles driving around on our roads every year. It's the equivalent to using 212,000 litres of petrol or the equivalent CO2 emissions from 68 homes of energy use for an entire year. So moving on to the practical examples and the lessons learned and how we can actually improve resource efficiency on site. So I'm going to give you uh, an overview of the different things that we implemented and then the total savings that we made on site. So the first one, something very simple in your drying rooms. We installed thermostats in all the drying rooms and we calculated it by just reducing the usage of those heaters by just one hour per day. We save 355 euros a year and almost two tons of CO2 emissions. Similarly, for the uh, site accommodation heaters, they were often left on at night. And again, if you reduce those by just one hour a day, you save 217 euros a year. Uh, festoon lighting on site was an, another big issue with high energy costs got to do with uh, temporary site lighting. So on the left, you can see um, there's lighting on, but there's adequate daylight. So simple things switch off the lights. And on the right, on one of the newer projects, we switch from festoon lighting to fluorescent lighting. Uh, they use about 75% less energy per uh, room. And then also the side light, uh, layout, or the side lighting layout in a number of areas is very poor. So there's too many bulbs, it was badly set up. So get that reconfigured and you're using less energy. Uh, nighttime electricity usage was a huge issue as well. When I started on the Jogishka site, when we sat down to look at the energy bills, 50% of the electricity usage was at night despite no work taking place on site at night. So by putting a system in place where nighttime electricity uses were switched off, we saved over 5,000 euros on that site. And on the cancer research facility, we saved a further 9,000 euros um, by having a system in place to switch off electricity at night. These transformer boxes here on the left, the yellow and red box, um, they use roughly 10% of their output even when they're just plugged in because it is a transformer. So it's generating electricity. So by switching off those, we had nearly 30 of those on one of the case study sites. So by switching them off uh, during the day when they weren't required, evening, weekends, holidays, we saved 4,200 euros a year and 22 tons of CO2 emissions. So again, something very simple, put in a little uh, fuse box above the transformer box and someone can switch it off when it's not required. Similarly with office equipment, we put one person in charge who had to go around every evening and switch everything off, making sure things work on sleep and making sure th things like photocopy weren't left on. That's another 588 euros a year and three tons of CO2 emissions. So the costs quickly add up uh, when you take everything into account. Idling machinery was another huge issue. So we had um, high uh, diesel costs for that site. It was a large site. So things like the diggers, the dumpers, the teleporter, the, we've seen that they were often left idle during the day. Someone would go to the toilet or take a break, but the machine would be left running. So we calculated that by reducing the usage of um, an idling machine by just one hour per day, if your company has 50 pieces of equipment, you can save over 38,000 euros a year on diesel costs. So to look further into that, we uh, got an idle tracker installed on one of the machines on site as a trial. Uh, it was a GPS-based system. So track the idle time of the machine. So you can see here, the third column in gives the shift time, so roughly six to seven hours. And we found that the idling time of each machine was on average about an hour for every six hours work on site. Uh, night, night sensors for your security lighting, so obviously we're switching lights off in the building, 
but we needed the external lights to stay on for security reasons. So we just installed the light sensors, uh, turns on your security lights when it gets dark and switches them off when it gets bright. And then the lighting within the site accommodation, your toilets, canteen, drying room, meeting rooms, the lights are generally left on all day, every day. So we installed PIR sensors into each cabin and they just automatically switch off the lights as well. Then earlier connection to the grid is something that we try and do on all our sites. So rather than having a diesel generator like this in place to power the site accommodation during site setup, what we're trying to encourage is having the electrical uh, grid connection in place as soon as possible. So diesel cost for that generator on that site was 205 euros a week or 922 euros a month. And when we got the electrical connection, we calculated that our electrical cost for the site accommodation was just 49 euros a week or 220 euros a month. So that's a cost saving of 700 euros a month or over 8,000 euros a year. Then moving on from energy onto the waste side of things. So something very simple, but having skip signage in place at all times if you've segregated skips on site. We found that if the signage blew away or went missing or fell down, then there was a general disregard for skip segregation. And also with regards to skip segregation, we found that on our projects, by segregating waste on site, you can save 10% on your waste management costs. Then tape back schemes is something that we try and encourage with all our suppliers. So the first one on the left is the electrical contractor have to return all of the timber cable dumps to the supplier. So that saves us 186 euros on waste management costs. And same with the furniture supplier. All the cardboard and the plastic from the furniture installation on site is returned to the supplier. That's another 490 euros saved on waste management costs. More tape-back schemes, the mechanical contractor, the, their boxes for pipe insulation. So all those boxes were returned, it's good, clean, recyclable cardboard. So they were all returned to the supplier for recycling and another 334 euros saved. Same with the electrical contractor, all the light fitting boxes were returned to the supplier and that was another 110 euros saved. Then something simple like pallets. Um, each one of those pallets is worth five euros to the contractor, so any damaged uh, or any undamaged pallets can be returned. Um, and we actually stockpiled them on site and we sold them to a company that buys pallets. And then electrical wire tails, um, th that's a subcontractor issue. However, if the main contractor is paying for those materials, then the main contractor should be getting the value from um, selling that material for scrap value. So you can get 2,000 euros per ton for copper wire. So if you have electrical outputs on site that you've paid for, then you should be segregating that waste and generating the revenue for yourself. These metal barriers, they were costing us around 42 euros each, and there was a lot of them damage on site from uh, machinery and delivery drivers. So we changed to a different system. We have a plastic system in place. Uh, they were more durable barrier, um, and that saved a lot of wastage in that area. And then handling and storage of materials on site was another huge issue. So we had to train subcontractors um, to things like the induction, focus groups, uh, tool box talks. So trying to encourage them to handle and store the materials better, things like glass, uh, plasterboard, cement bags, things that are easily damaged on site. Then skip void space. So um, skip, void space was a huge issue on site and we calculated that on the judicial site, in just six months, we paid 5,000 euros uh, to the waste management contractor to essentially dispose of air on our site. Because um, we're paying by skip, not by weight. So any void space that you're having your skips, you're paying for. If you're paying by weight, it's a different story. Um, so as I said, 5,000 euros over six months to dispose of air. So we did this exercise on site. This was a timber skip that had been um, attempted to be compacted by a site teleporter. So what we did, we simply took all the timber back out of the skip and uh, restacked it as efficiently as possible within that uh, skip. So it took us about three hours to do it, two people, and it was a 60% reduction of uh, space in that skip and it saved 192 hours. So this is just, um, it's a table of the wave types by volume for a uh, dietary unit project. So you can see the number one waste is timber, well, quickly followed um, on that project by void space. And the same with the special needs units. Timber was again the number one waste, and second waste was void space. So huge costs involved 
and I will skip by to this. So water, I could summarize water uh, in one slide because we've actually found that the two contractors are very conscious of water use on site and generally things like leaks and, and water housekeeping is very good. So uh, on the left is just a leak in hose, so housekeeping is out for leaks and fix them as efficiently or quickly as possible. And on the right, always have a tap on our whole system on site and the bucket is just for tool washing, so you don't have to leave the tap on when you're washing your tool. So to summarize the savings on the PPP project, we made 19,490 euros of savings, and we were able to identify a further 26,336 euros of possible savings on site. So that gives your total savings of 48,827 euros. So what does that 48,000 mean to a main contractor? It's 32% of the total expenditure on energy and waste management on site. So if we put all those initiatives into place, we can reduce the energy and waste cost by 32%. The saving of 48,000 represents a saving of 0.47% of the entire project value of roughly 10.5 million. And importantly, if the contractor wants to make an additional 48,000 euros in profit, if they're working to a theoretical profit margin of around 3%, you have to carry out 1.6 million euros worth of work to make 48,000 euros of profit. So key performance indicators or KPIs was something that we started calculating from the first project so that we could take the KPIs forward and try and reduce them on the future case study sites. So on the PPP project, we found that waste was costing us just over five euros per meter squared or 402 euros per 100,000 construction value. And energy was costing four euros ninety seven per meter squared or three hundred ninety five euros per thousand euro hundred thousand construction value. So then from the main uh, Jogishka project of the primary and secondary school, we tried to implement as many of these initiatives as possible on the special needs unit sites because they were a similar project, they had similar design and similar specification. So we wanted to see exactly what we could do. So the KPIs uh, were then calculated for the special needs units and we were able to reduce the KPIs on average of 79% uh, by implementing all these initiatives on site. So one good example is the cost of electricity per meter squared was reduced from nearly 5 euros per meter squared to just 1 euro 25 per meter squared once we had implemented everything that I've outlined in this presentation. So what about the SME? I've talked about the main contractor, but the SME can actually um, make greater savings than the main or the, the large multinational contractor. So based on the cystic fibrosis unit compared to the PPP project that I've been talking about, we found that the SME can save 0.53% of the project value versus 0.44% for the, the large contractor. They can increase their profit by 17.67% versus 14.65% for the main contractor. And interestingly enough, the SME is actually producing less waste, waste on site. So they're producing 0 0.031 tons per meter squared versus 0 0.0388 tons per meter squared for the large contractor. So 25% less waste. So just to conclude, all the possible solutions that I've listed in the presentation, they're all low cost, low cost, quick win options. So what I mean by that is they're very easily implemented on site and the contractor can get savings from them straight away. Resource efficiency is easily achievable and cost savings can be made in many areas of energy usage and waste management. And we need to ensure that when the economic growth does occur again in the construction industry, that we are ready to develop this sector of the economy as one that is sustainable. And maximizing the construction industry's energy efficiency and reducing our waste are both good options for reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and meeting that 2020 target. So I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I think we're doing questions at the end, Eric. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.